Let's get to our chart of the day. We're talking about <laughs> Dell soaring to a new record intraday high following big quarterly earnings fueled by AI server demand. Weiss, you already front run us on this one, but you're looking at it. So tell me, what do you, what exactly you're looking at? I so think, what I'm looking at. So here's here's what's bizarre. Does the look? They had a good quarter. They it was they, a really good quarter. Well, yes and no. Okay. What was good about it is that they had 800 million in AI server server revenues, and the uh, the backlog went from 1.6 billion last quarter to 2.9 billion. Good numbers. But guess what? It's a 90 billion dollar revenue company. So you're increasing. And by the way, they just came in line on revenue, and they lowered guidance for the first quarter next year. Right. So what was so great about it? So to me, you don't add market cap. But you don't increase market cap by a third on that report. That's the feeding. But, but is it just on about. the report? I mean, for example, next yes. week we have HP coming out. They're having a big event about right. AI laptops. Dell's obviously a big uh, PC maker as well. So, is it in your mind just on this report, or is it the idea that there's multiple parts of their business that could benefit from AI? It's just on this report. Okay. Okay. You also the other think parts it's cheap. Of this 18 is times in your mind, that's now cheap. It. it, it no, it's not. Historically, this company sells for most of their business commodity business, right? So PCs, that's still weak. Enterprise spending, we've heard repeatedly, is slowing. But the typical multiple for this company is 10 to 12 times. Right. So now you're paying, you know, 50 to 80 percent. But is it cheap that. to get into the AI trade? Here's why I think it'll keep working. I'd buy it if it pulled back because it's just going to be about AI. Every other part of the business is going to be ignored. It's just about AI. So this quarter is just, you know, very instructive in terms of what's driving these stocks. So okay. any place you get. So would you rather pay 18 times for this, which is overvalued, or 70 times for NVIDIA, which is also overvalued? I mean, Britt, I'm going to pose that question over to yeah. you. Would you rather pay 18 times for this or for NVIDIA? And, and what do you think about what might be a theme that's kind of coming up right now when it comes to AI and hardware, as I mentioned? And HP having a big event next week where Jensen Wong's supposed to be there, Lisa Sue's supposed to drop in as well to talk about their AI PCs. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to how much are you growing earnings, how much are you growing revenues, and what are your operating or profit margins? And so I think right now, Dell surprised everybody. I think Dell is a very under owned name, by the way. And, you know, the algos. And the call buying, I didn't look at the call buying this morning, but I do think to one point that, that Steve talked about and to kind of dig in even more, the, op, the call buying in this market right now is very frenzied and very high. And so you're seeing a lot of these overreactions on names, but I do think Dell is more reaction to being under owned and it caught most people by surprise is why you're seeing that reaction. But at the same point, Frank, you can look at a snowflake yesterday, which was down, what, 25%? because they had a miss and Frank Flutman's, you know, going to move to chairman. And so I just think right. we're having these extreme moves and these kind of companies. And that is the price of admission. If you're going to buy into these tech names, it can go either way around earnings calls. Jim, I don't want to leave you out really quick. Your thought on AI and hardware. I want also want to point out something else. Uh, ticker is EQIX. We don't talk about this stock a lot, but Equinix trading at a 52 week high right now. That's a big server uh, play, especially when it comes to data AI. center play data center. Excuse me. Thank yeah. you. Well, look, I, I think there is fundamental value, and let me define that word, meaning it's not a bubble. This is what Bryn was talking about within AI space. I'm not saying these stocks are all priced like value stocks, but I will say, you know, if we go to NVIDIA before we get to EQIX, you know, it trades at 32 times this year's earnings for a stock that's consistently outperforming on earnings estimates, uh, growth estimates above 50 percent. So that actually is worth it. I mean, I would not say that that's an expensive stock. I actually don't know EQIX, so I don't really want to get get into that. But I think the overarching point that you're making, Frank, is whether there is room to run in the AI trade. And I think with these large cap names, there is. Meta is attractively priced as an example. Google, I know people are leaving it for dead on the mistakes that have happened in the last week, but not just the attractive price there, the fact that they bought DeepMind 10 years ago and they really have the technological chops with which to not only fix the problems that they have, but really grow that business gives me a lot of comfort there. So where I'm going with this is if we're looking at AI, and this is what Bryn was saying earlier, this is not a bubble. It's fundamentally there is value to be there. I will say, however, just going back to where I was uh, at the beginning of this, you know, my overweight is outside of AI because I see more attractive prices there relative to earnings per share growth, and that's why I'm overweight industrials, financials, healthcare, et cetera, all of which, by the way, if we were to look at the returns year to date on financials, industrials, healthcare as a sector, we'd be pretty darn happy after two months to have 
high single digits in these sectors. Problem is, everybody says, well, NVIDIA is up 35, 40 percent, whatever it is. So these other areas must stink. That is not the case. These areas are having fabulous years and are likely to continue throughout the rest of this year. You know, I, I just add one thing. So sure. j j I don't want to come off as preachy. I'm actually guilty of the same enthusiasm, <laughs> so to speak, my portfolio. Yeah. So I sold Ver Vertiv. I sold Vertiv half of it before the quarter, sold a little more, then sold the rest of it on the quarter. And that was a good sale. And then what happened? NVIDIA reported. Right? So I bought it back because guess what? You know, they sell the cooling racks. They've got a great business there for data centers. So when they talked about data centers, great. Today, what's happening? Stock's up again because of data centers, as is EQIX. Right. So it's, it's incestuous what's going on. But to Brent's point, yes, options are driving a lot of it. But you know why people are buying options? Because they don't want to buy a $1,000 stock. They, they still don't get the math that if you put $1,000 into a $1,000 stock, you get the same returns if you buy 10 shares of a $100 stock. So until the people start getting smarter on that, you know, okay. they'll keep driving the options Let's market. Let's button up this conversation. Two points of order. I know you were just exaggerating, but uh, NVIDIA's valuation for BE yeah. about 36 times. Also, upgrade today for NVIDIA from Daiwa. Uh, raised the price target to 900 uh, from 535, believe it or not. They so why would you listen to that analyst? Why would you listen to an analyst <laughs> who has to virtually double his price target? Bryn, Bryn would you listen to that analyst? I know. I mean, I, it hurts me to agree with Steve, but I mean, this guy was so late to the party. It's like, why are you at 535? What have you been doing? So I just think that, you know, who knows what happened here, but I think the price target is already at, it's already at 817. So right. that was a little bit late, late to the party. You know, some people say better late than never. I say never late is better, personally. I say drop coverage if you're doing that. So. <laughs>